Alrighty, I think we're going to get started here. So today we are going to be checking out the uh, Vanifar, uh, Prime Speaker Vanifar here, um, who is the new creature that is a uh, birthing pod. Um, so this is a list that's been floating around online a bit that's been doing very well. Um, it's gone five out with a couple different leagues. So we're going to be testing it out as well. Um, Pod itself is one of my favorite cards of all time. I played Pod from the time that it was legal in Modern until pretty much the time it was banned. I had actually just uh, retired a bit before then. Um, so the the idea of the deck itself is just uh, using Mana Dorks, and you're going to power out into your combo pieces, and then um, from there we just combo out. And it's using the Kiki Jiki combo. So here we just have a variety of lands that's going to be able to just get us the mana we need because it is a pretty greedy deck, honestly, when it comes to mana. It's trying to do things like cast double color spells, but then it's trying to, you know, potentially cast a Kiki Jiki for three red. No big deal. So the combo itself, uh, in case you're not aware of it, um, it's using Kiki Jiki, who is a 2-2 two -two, uh, five drop that has haste, and you get to copy a creature that's non-legendary, and then it would be sacrificed at the end of turn. So what you do with Giki Jiki is you combine it with a card such as Bounding Crassus that we see here. So when it enters the battlefield, you tap or untap a creature. You can also do it with a Breaching Hippocamp who enters the battlefield, untaps a creature, or you can do it with Zealous Constructs that untaps a permanent and gains control of it and gains haste. So. In all three instances here, you're going to tap your Kikijiki, uh, target the creature, and um, once you're targeted that creature, it's going to come and play, it's going to create a copy of it for you. That creature is going to untap Kikijiki, and it also has haste now, so then you tap the um, Kikijiki again, targeting that creature once again, and just repeat this until you have enough creatures on the board to swing at your opponent for lethal. Um, so it's pretty sweet. On top of that, the deck has a lot of great interactions because it's able to fetch up pretty much any uh, creature you want as a bullet. Um, and that's really where the sideboard, there's a couple pieces in the main such as like your um, Eternal Witness, being able to get back anything, your Deputy Detention, your Kitchen Things, um, letting you stick around a little bit longer and it's a double sack outlet which is really nice. Um, Shalai lets you just kind of protect your creatures and then pump the board as well. Um, really you're going to see a lot of the um, interactions with picking up the cards from the sideboard. So then being able to you know fetch up an, uh, a Kataki for any of those artifact matchups, the Eidolon, some of those combo decks, uh, Magas of the Moon for like the Tron matchups, um, Thrun for the um, control decks out there, Thragtus for the grindier matchups and ones where you need life. Same thing here with the Kitchen Finks. Tireless Tracker, so you can, where you're going to be able to just really rely on the Tireless Tracker and pick it up. You have a couple other pieces to fight against Artifact Hate here with Reclamation Sage. Um, we have a couple of Braids and an Ancient Grudge as well, and then a Relic for some of those Cyborg Hate. So, um, the deck is very powerful um, in the sense that it can go off with pretty much just a Banifar on board and another creature. Because you can chain from a one drop into a Scrib Ranger. Scrib Ranger can untap your Kiki Jiki and then you sack the Scrib Ranger, get a three drop. The three drop, if you go with the Rallier, you can untap it or you can go Bounding Grasses, untap it, and kind of just keep doing the chain um, up until you get to the Woodland Bellow where Bellow comes in and then you fetch up a Crassus, drop Crassus again, and this time you'll be able to undo it with a Kiki. So. Um, I'm testing out this version because this is the version that has been flowing around. I'm a big fan of Renegade Rallyer though, so when I t try out my version of the deck, I'll most likely be playing Renegade Rallyer because I feel like that card's just uh, too much not to tap into because you're able to just basically sack a two drop, bring out Rallyer, and then you're able to just bring back your two drop, which I think is pretty nuts. So, so we're gonna jump into a uh, friendly league here instead of competitive since it is my first time piloting the deck. And let's see how it goes. Yeah, I'm pretty excited to play the Vanna Fry deck.
And for anyone that's watching this in the future, we are currently uh, in the middle of a polar vortex, Stormageddon type uh, thing in uh, Michigan and the Midwest, so it's uh, pretty much the entire state shut down. So my work is off. I worked remotely earlier today for a good bit and then uh, called it quits towards the end of the day and now we're jumping on the stream. doesn't do much in terms of accelerating uh, so we're not really going to be able to do much with it because we're not playing anything till turn three um, we technically have all the combo pieces we need but we're just really not going to be getting there with this hand um, even court itself we're not going to be able to cast into like turn four for a one drop so I do not think this is a good enough hand for us to keep this hand's much more reasonable. We got a Mana Dork, we can play turn one. Um, we can go into an Ooze and an Eldritch Evolution if we want. Um, so this is just fine for us. We got a Hippocamp on top. Do I want that? I don't think I necessarily need it because um, I'm going to go turn one here in Noble into a turn two ooze into a turn three evolution sacking the ooze for a Vanifar. Uh, I think at that point maybe I do one because I would be able to uh, get the chain going with it because I can play it and then either Evolution out my noble, yeah. Evolution my noble into a Crassus, and then I can sack play this and sack it for a, uh, a Kiki. Ooh, a Grim Lava Mancer is going to be tough because that's going to kill all of our things. <laughs> All right, let's see how this goes then. Yeah, the snow hasn't really been too bad, um, which is good, but it is bitterly cold. Um, so this is burn. I pretty much want to conserve my life as much as possible, so I'm going to be grabbing the force here, and I'm going to be playing the noble. And yeah, I'm just going to be passing here. That's awesome you're getting a CDL, though, man. Block the lava mountains. the noble and possibly getting a deputy of detention I wouldn't be surprised that's that new spectacle card I had to double check that um, I saw it, the, it was in the other deck we played the other day so um, I don't really want to play ooze here because if I just drop ooze it's going to reasonably die here and I won't be able to do much with it where if I play it the following turn I would be able to eat something um, I'm thinking I want to just Eldritch Evolution and sack away my Noble I don't 
don't think Phoenix wouldn't be bad at all. I can gain some life and I'd be able to stop him from attacking. Um, the deputy of detention would exile his idol on probably here and then I think I like the Phoenix. And then from there I think we're just gonna pass it and see if we can slow down our opponent from doing anything because of this. So I'll just play the steam fence. Um, untap now. Question is if I want to play out the ooze. He could shoot it. Because um, I don't really have the green source to do anything with it anyhow. So I think I'm okay with doing that. He's going to have to send some damage its way instead of shooting at me if he wants to do it. And if he lets me untap with it, I'm going to start eating my dudes. Thank you to everyone that's just joined. Uh, we're playing uh, Kiki Vanifar today. And then afterwards, uh, I am definitely open to playing whatever deck people are interested in seeing. My friend recommended uh, we check out that experimental Tron deck because he thought it'd be a lot of fun for the stream. But, you know, definitely open to whatever. the ooze. terrible spot here. Um, opponent's down to one card, no cards in the grave. Um, I can play out the uh, Bounding Crassus on their turn when they swing, and um, or play the Hippocamp. I don't really like playing the Hippocamp because then I can't fetch up a non-painful green source. So I think I'm just going to pass here. Because if I can fetch up a non-painful uh, green source, I would be able to play Evolution on my turn, which would put us in, I think, a pretty good spot. Alrighty. So we are going down to seven. We really need him not to have a burn spell drawn. So he's swinging with just the idle on. So if we play Bounding Crassus, we're going to go down to 5. If he has a Bolt, uh, we're going to be going down to 3 and then die from the Grim, which isn't good. Um, but I think we alternately could crack the Scalding Tarn. Um, 
but I don't think that we have a way to get, we have an island we could grab, but the island would let us, wouldn't let us get, yeah, you know what, I think we have to go for this, because I think this puts us in the best position to win, um, rather than waffling a bit and hoping to win. Okay, so that's we were we were dead either way. So and that's a bummer, but that's okay. So for this, the cards I definitely want to bring in are both Phanxes and the Thrag. Um, don't need those. I could bring in like Glen Lalandra if I wanted to be able to just take out their burn spells, which isn't a terrible thing. Don't think we need the Rex Age or the Thrun. A Braid's not a terrible thing to kill off their creatures. Um, I don't think we really need the longevity that's going to come with Tireless. I don't necessarily need this deputy. I want to try to keep the, um, the evolutions and the cords as much as possible because that's what's going to let me fetch up these different powerful creatures. Um, I feel like shaving two, three drops because I'm bringing in two, three drops. And that's an important thing when you're doing these kind of chain style decks with um, Pod or Vanifar here because you want to make sure you can retain the core of your deck as much as possible because the more you shave away from it the worse your chains are going to get so you always have to keep that in mind um, with the ability of our opponent to just take out everything we have i'm not opposed to taking out a tireless i mean a kiki here as well and then i think i do want to bring in just this one here and i think i'm going to sack uh get rid of the Board for it. So I'm going to go with those four for these four. And if uh, you guys think I should be sideboarding differently, definitely let me know. I'm uh, definitely playing this for the first time and I haven't played pod in years. So different meta and everything like that makes you sideboard differently. Not bad at all. We're going to be able to go bird into Finx into Eldris. I think that's a winner. Once again, we're trying to just conserve our life here, but we want to make sure our second thing that we crack here, the Scalding Tarn, it can get us a green source um, if necessary, because I don't want to be stuck in that situation where we can't cast our Eld Eldritch Evolution or our Cord. turn one I feel more confident in being able to hurt ourselves just a little bit um, here I want to be able to hit a green and a blue source um, for that hippocamp in case something happens to our birds and I'm gonna pay that You think they're stream sniping me? 
I do not think they care enough to stream snap me. <laughs> So here, we could do a pretty pretty good play, I think. Um, so we can Eldritch Evolution away our Finx and go get a Thragtus. We'd lose two life, but the Finx would um, wash that, and then we have a Thragtus putting us at a positive five life. Um, the question is if we want to swing first. Um, I think I'm a fan of that, because if they do block, we would re uh, increase the life gain by an additional two. I don't think they will block, but, you know. Okay. And once again, I want to keep that pain that we could take down to a minimum. So I'm going to that one. And then we're going to evolution away the Sphinx. wrong and we're gonna ship it back to our opponent yeah heart of the cards just gotta cheat like Yugi Moto alrighty what could we do here you know what I would want here I want a phantasmal image. When I update this list, I'm definitely putting in a phantasmal image. How sweet would it be to cord into a phantasmal image copying our thrag test right now? Man. Okay, so I think we're just gonna swing here. Thanks for joining us, Murphy. Your opponent wants to trade. That's okay. And then I am just going to drop another fix. Skull crack us, that's okay. Oh, it should. It should. And then we, uh, you know, if this was another deck, we'd be able to like Eldritch Evolution it, or we could go get a. Uh, uh, Eternal Whip, bring back the Phantasmal Image. It'd just be a great day. And that's the version of this deck that I really like playing, is the toolboxy um, version of it with the ability to threaten the combo. This is much more leaning towards that combo version that it just wants to have those different lines with a few pieces in here dedicated to keeping yourself alive. So we'll see how it plays out with this version. Uh, but that is the other version I want to try out very soon with uh, Vanifar and Kiki. And then I want to definitely try out that... Uh, the black version with uh, the Malira combo going on. All right, so I think we're just gonna swing in. We don't really have to do much here. Opponent's at three line for at sixteen. Uh, I'm not going to shock myself here. I'm just going to pass. Uh, I can drop the Bounding Crassus into play, and um, I can't think of a way for them to stay alive. 
reasonably. So let's make sure there's nothing else that we would want. Um, I really don't think so. I like the rest of the cards we have in the deck. Yeah, I think we're good. You know, you used to be able to do these um, really fun phantasmal image change with Sun Titan. I miss those days. We could bring those days back. We could bring those days back. All right, so this hand is not great. We got double groves um, and then a bunch of three drops that we're not accelerating out. Um, cards that we kind of really wish were just in our deck rather than in our hands. We're going to ship this. This hand's much more reasonable. We got uh, a mana dork into Fanx, into Vanifar. We got good quality sources as well. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and keep this. Another breeding pool. I um, guess it's not a terrible thing in case our bird dies. We'd be able to cast a Vanifar either way. I think we're going to get another source though, so I must set this to the bottom. Love an answer. Makes our hive a little bit more difficult. We got an ooze, that's great. So I'm gonna shock here, because I really want to power out this bird to see if we can get a turn two Finx. If not, we can play the turn two ooze. Not too bad. I mean, I'm not a big fan of that turn two ooze. We can't, once again, we can't eat something as we drop it, so depending on how things play out, I may wait a turn. Kill our bird, possibly here. Yeah, bird's gone. Bird is gone. So we're at sixteen. There's three cards in hand. If we play, if we don't play the ooze this turn. Um, next turn, I think we would prefer to, I don't think we'd play it next turn either because we'd prefer to play the Finx. So I think I'd rather throw out the Ooze now, make them waste a spell on it, or run their guide into it. So then the following turn we can run out the Finx. Um, and then hopefully follow it up with an Eldritch Evolution into a Thrag Tusk. Yeah, I think that's pretty sweet. This deck does not have Primeval Titan. I think the only six drop that this deck plays is the uh, um, the Bellower, the Woodland Bellower, that is the six drop six five. Um, I can actually link you guys the deck. That should be it for me right there. So you guys can take a look at the list I am playing that was sent to me by my friend Andrew. Wanted me to play it. I had looked at it earlier today as well when I woke up. I saw someone else post it, so I'm definitely going to try out the deck. And he made my life a little bit easier by sending it my way. Alright, so opponent's going to charm us. And it's going to take out our dude. And that's okay. They're down to two cards, and we're going to be going to ten here, and then down to eight, and then back up to ten, because I'm going to play this Finx. Hey, sweetie. Thanks for joining us. Pope's gonna spike us. What do you 
you got? Can you kill this? Ooh, skewer. Alrighty. Cool. So they have no cards in hand, and they passed it back to us. Uh, that's pretty awesome for us, I think. So, um, uh, alrighty. So they can sh bring us down to a virtual two. All right now, or they, they bring us down two two. Um, let's see. I definitely think our best line is to just. Eldritch Evolution away the Finx. We'll gain two more life, go up to six, and then we'll get Thrag Toss, go up to eleven. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's our play. Shoot us down to nine or kill the Finx. Okay, so we would be going down to five here. So they can put us at three, which means we gotta do something to stay alive. Which is always the plan, right? I wanna get to source that can. I don't think it should be a problem other than the fact that I want red. And with that, I think we will grab a steam. No, let's, let's grab a steam. Alrighty. So, what we could do is just either run out Vanifar and then pass. I don't like that play because if opponent draws any burn spell on their turn, they win the game. So, we can't have that. Um. I could play the island cord and go get a Finx. It would require me to tap down the Thrag Tusk in order to do that, but it put us at another two life, which I think would be fine because our opponent should be only able to do one uh, damage spell, and then they don't have any. They only have one card in their graveyard to hit us with another Lava Mancer, and then our Kitchen Finx would be able to block the guide. Um, we really want to get this Vanifar out so we can, you know, win or just stay alive so much that they can't do anything. Um, the other route is to go get um, go get a scavenging ooze. It's not a terrible line, but I don't really like the idea of only being able to gain one life. So I think I don't know. It's I don't know why I want to win. So 
I think I like the idea of playing the thing, uh, getting a Finks here. Um, hmm. Is there anything else that I'm missing? I don't think so. I could go get a spell skite. Um, spell skite would let me pay the island. I have the blue at the end of turn to eat the Lava Mancer hit. And then I could potentially pay two life um, and take a regular damage hit. But if he plays like a Boros Charm, I think I'd be dead. Yeah, I'm going to go with the the cord play. Um, I don't think we would want Ewet. There is still one Finks left, for sure. Yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. is great for us. And I think we're just going to play Vanifar this turn. And I think we're going to Let's see, if we swing with the rag toss, we'd still have two blockers. I'm okay with that. This is uh, our first game with it, so um, you guys are seeing my first impressions of the deck. Uh, I am not, uh, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of this list because I like having a little bit more of a two boxy feel for it while still threatening the combo. Um, but this deck has been doing very well. It's been posted a couple times already um, by other people, so see how it goes. Um, match one, game three, I believe. So. So if opponent draws a burn spell, we're still dead. We can start doing unreasonable things here, such as sacking our face here. Comes back, we gain two life, go up to seven. And then we can get a breaching hippo camp. Hippo camp will untap our speaker. Speaker will sack the hippo camp. Oh, let's see. If we go for the geeky combo, they are going to just shoot our um, our kiki jiki right away. Um, the other way we can go about it is just grabbing the kiki jiki and then making a copy of the Thrag Tusk, um, which would be pretty cool. Because if we go Zealous Constrips, untap the Vanifar, go get Woodland Bellower, Woodland Bellower could go get us a 3-drop, which would just be probably a f another Finx here. Um, 
put us at nine. And then next turn, we threaten lethal again. I don't, hmm. I don't think we need to go that way. I think gaining the five is just more than enough, so. I think we're just gonna grab Kiki right now. Kiki's gonna copy Thrag. And then if they kill Kiki, we're definitely okay with it. And if they don't kill Kiki, we're even fine with it. Send in the Thrag here. I could send in both, um, but oh, they're just gonna skip. All right, now sweet, we got it. Game one. This deck is obviously the greatest deck in modern. I'm 100% win rate, so can't beat that. And how are you gonna just wake up at four in the afternoon, Reese? That is ridiculous, man. I've had like an entire life in the time. Like woke up. Did work, did homework, did more work, made myself lunch, cleaned up a bit, now I'm streaming. In the matter of time that you just slept all day, I'm actually kind of just jealous, to be honest. Oh, every deck loses to the god hand of Ponza though, doesn't it? Um, I didn't put in the Phantasmal image, I'm running this list as um, the person that made it had, just because it has been doing very well, um, but I'll probably tweak it a bit. I mean, this the coolest thing about these pod style decks is you really can flex a lot in the deck to make it do what you want. So this hand's got a bird and a kiki and then five lands, which I'd really be rolling dice to see if I draw anything to do anything with this hand. Um, Oh, the in-game volume. Sorry. Let's see if I can get rid of that for you guys. Alright. Hopefully that is better. Apologies. Um, Alright, well, let's keep it. Replace my streamer image with a hot check. I am a hot check. <laughs> All right, we'll mull this. All right, this hand's sweet. Like, how dare you assume my gender, you know? Um, Kiki's just so much mana. I don't think we're going to get to that. I think we'd rather draw other things to sack to Prime Speaker. So I think we're going to put that to the bottom. Yes, Reese, you are always right. I am a solid, like, five, so. Okay. So we can play another Mana Dork and then go Eldritch the next turn and go Vanifar. Alternatively, we could Eldritch this turn, but I don't really know what they're on yet, so I don't know what I'd be searching up for. So I'm just going to play the Misty, and we're going to run out the Noble. And let's beat up our opponent for one.
right, so opponents passing it to us. I think I want a steam vents. Okay, so they're probably on blue-white control, I would imagine. Um, I don't really want to run a Vanifar into that. I think I would rather just drop a Noble and pass turn. And I can play a Bounding Crassus at the end of their turn. Yeah, I definitely could have gone that line of um, attacking with the bird, hold up the mana, and play it, the Crassus, but I wanted to generate some more mana, um, and I, I'm only giving up the two damage, so I thought that might have been worthwhile, and now I'm going to play the Crassus at the end of their turn. Just gonna swing here with the Crassus for five. See what our opponent does. The opponent's just taking it. Okay, so I still don't really like the idea of running out Vanifar into what potentially could be a sweeper. I think I'd be more okay with doing the evolution play and fetching up something that's good for this matchup. Shalai would be pretty sweet. I could go Crassus into Shalai and have a really strong threat. What do you guys think? You guys like the Shalai line? We could just sack, yeah, it's either that or I could also just sack a dork and fetch up a tracker, but I don't have any lands to back it up, so it really wouldn't be doing much for me. So yeah, let's go, let's go with that line. You don't play this game, Frank? I think you're lying to me. Got some Jess guy action from our opponent. They're not us for three. Man. How rude. Alright, so we're just gonna pass. I feel like Jess guy's gonna be a hard matchup. They're just gonna kill everything of ours. I think we're gonna swing with a bird and then drop a mana fire and see how life goes. Right there, boom. Alrighty. 
Uh, it's not um, Saffron's list. It's another list. But I think it was posted on Reddit. And then uh, Andrew sent it over to me. So that's what we're going with. I think we're just going to swing again. Opponent's gonna bolt our bird. Pretty rude opponent. And we're gonna drop another bird. Remind me, what does rhythm do? good with this uh, bird plan just letting our opponent uh, die <laughs> to bird swings so let's see how far we can take this oh they're gonna helix the bird oh my gosh I feel okay about our sideboard games honestly though because I think we'll be boarding out of a combo a bit and then we'll be picking up a lot of really high quality mid-range cards See, Reese, I think we're talking about the wrong kind of rhythm. They're going to path our noble. I think we're going to grab another forest. Creatures can't be countered, and non-token creatures you control have riot. That's pretty cool. Alrighty. Um, I think we're just going to play the bird. And we're just missing, I guess we would want to grab a breeding pool, oh no, we'd want a stomping ground, I guess. I wonder if we may ever need more than one green source, and that would get us another red source. The bird beats! sphere right now just because our opponent could have a, uh, a non-land permit I want to get rid of so and I don't really want to run out Kiki Jiki either am I playing the haste land the hall of the vandal lord you're talking about this list also doesn't have that and I'm a big fan of that card and because in paper I picked it up so um, I'm definitely going to be playing it on my list once I run it back so all right so there's a Tefri. I think we're just going to get rid of the Teferi. Play that man tapped and pass it back to our opponent. Opponent's rude and got back their Teferi. Thing where your opponent gets to untap a Teferi. I swear he's like the strongest planeswalker outside of Karn Father. Because that's the only planeswalker that truly matters, let's be real. 
Okay, so we got a hippocamp. Um, I think we're just gonna pass it to our opponent. See what they got going on. See if we can somehow magically resolve this hippocamp into Geeky Jiggy. So there's like no way they don't have the Snapcaster, right? But, you know, I was told to either get busy living or get busy dying, so let's see how that plays out. Oh my gosh. Uh, so they played the Breaching Hippocamp in the 4-drop um, because you were able to ch keep chaining with it. So where previously you would play Restoration Angel in that slot, um, in here you would need the 4-drop because it would untap Vanifar, and then that lets you keep the chain going. Um, and it also combos off with Geeky. Um, so... The other one that's a 2-4 has to be a little bit more specific. So there's a Supreme. Opponents effectively drawing three cards every turn. I don't think we're going to win this one. So I'm going to go ahead and concede here, if that's good with you guys, because... I don't really want to run off the clock more than I have to. And I definitely think this game is over. Alright, so. I want to bring in a lot of cards that I'm able to just tap into their, um, their resilient portion of it and then just be a constant threat. So... Things like Thragtus, Thrun, Tireless Tracker here, um, even Kitchen Finks is pretty annoying for our opponent. Um, I want to definitely bring in Glenalandra, stop their counters from going off. I want to keep in July. Um, I definitely don't think we're on the combo plan here, so I'm at least taking out one Kiki Jiki, if not more. And I don't know how effective we're going to be with our Eldritch Evolutions because our opponent has so many burn spells and paths that it's going to make it really hard to keep any on the board. And there's a good chance that we're going to get two for one um, every time they do a counter, which they're going to have plenty of. Um, seven. With us not being on the trying to go too hard into this combo. I'm definitely okay with shaving a bellower. Um, I need a one crassus. Uh, I gotta cut out one more card. I wanna keep the zealous because I wanna see if I can steal, be cute and steal their planeswalker and do some fun stuff with that. Um, I wanna keep the scavenging oozes because I wanna be able to exile cards from their graveyard, but I'm not too inclined to bring in a relic because um, it's not that heavy in the graveyard deck. Uh, I think I'm going to take out the Hippo Camp. And I think that should be pretty good. Alright, so I'm good with this hand. I'm going to play out some Dorks, play out the Tracker, and go from there.
So how's everybody faring on Adult Snow Day? I am fetching up a... So I'm not too worried about the red source, because... Well, I should be worried about the red source, because I want to be able to cast Kiki, but... I have the island, I got plenty of dorks. The white would be relevant for just pretty much July. Um, things can go off the green. So I think I am gonna just grab the snapping gun. I think we're back. Apologies again to everyone. I'm bucketing the DC, so. could just play a spell skite here which I think I really like drop the spell skite and drop a dork and then just pass it back to our opponent Tracker. Don't have a dude to back it up with, but maybe the land to back it up with, but I think that's okay. We get we can't pay for it. And I'm gonna drop another man the dork out there for us. Pass it. After we get the beats for two. So we can't get just cast our Kiki just yet. We're one mana dude short. Um, I'm definitely okay, I think, here with just attacking with the Spell Sky and playing Hippocamp at the end of their turn. Or recording at the end of their turn. I 
in the path though. Okay. So we could just go for the Kiki Jiki here, um, but I think I'm a bigger fan of trying to go off two spells and back to back to our opponent. So instead here, I think the better line is to go Groves um, and then swing with the Hippocamp, and then I'll be able to cord for a four drop, which would be pretty threatening here because we'd be able to snag up Vanifar. And if our opponent doesn't deal with it, then we would then drop Kiki Jiki and go for the win. So we could, in response to them casting Path, drop the Shalai, and it would counter it. And as long as they don't have a, as long as they don't have a wrath, I think we pretty much just win. So I think that's what we're gonna go for. I think we can just, hmm. swinging is technically not lethal, um, unless we activate, and so I think we're okay with that. Because hmm. if we go, uh, if we go Kiki Jiki here, they would cryptic and they could just counter and tap our team down so that's not a good spot for us to be at um, if we swing with shalai we would get double exalted and then we could threaten the sh um, the activation on each of our creatures which would be lethal for them so i'm going to go with that line so we don't just get blown out by a cryptic thanks art much appreciated, man. Mm, so plus tapping all of our creatures. We can just add a counter. Or we can try to play Kiki. Kiki doesn't do much for us, um, but just running it out there. Because we can just make infinite dudes, but if they have a Wrath, it'd still just be game. And we wouldn't be able to cast it after they did that, so yeah, we're going to activate that and pass.
go for the helix. Helix. Okay, we're good with that. Because unless they have anything crazy, we should win the game now. So we are gonna go red, 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 boom, boom. Drop a kiki jiki. What you got for us, opponent? Do you have the path? Do you got it? Yeah, I mean, you, you effectively have the Splinter Twin combo in here because of Kiki Jiki. So Kiki Jiki plus any untapped creature allows you to do the, um, the Splinter Twin combo. So our opponent most likely has a path here. Um, if we go Kiki, tap, um, make a Breaching Hippocamp, and they should just untap in response. I think the only thing we could try to psych our opponent out on would be like going to the beginning of combat and see if they do anything. And if they don't, we could activate something there. And just wait for them to respond to it. Um, but then we could be giving up uh, three damage for no real good reason. But then again... Uh, hmm. All right, we're going to go to the beginning of combat. All right. So here we can just copy the the hippocamp and see if they have it. They most likely do. Nope. They're letting us untap. Okay. So then this is the combo that you're seeing here that, that they used to do with Splinter Twin. So you tap your Kiki Jiki, and then every time Kiki, uh, the new creature comes to play, it untaps Kiki Jiki. And then we just basically make infinite dudes, and then you win! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you're not, I mean, I don't know. He was activating his mana like he was. Maybe he wanted to psych me out, but. All right, you're, you know what, Reese, you are right. Like they say, you're always right. So I think that was good. Pretty happy with how that played out. I don't think I really want to do much here um, in terms of any more adjustments. So here we're gonna go mana dork into most likely nothing um, into Glen into Kiki. It's not terrible. It's not great, but it's not terrible. And I'm, I think I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, I mean um, that's definitely the coolest part about this, uh, sweetie. You're able to um, just play this massive toolbox deck. So like cards like Milling Mage are definitely great in here. We can just easily fetch them up. You know, I'm always a big fan of any um, any cyborg cards. It kind of just shuts the game down for the opponent. So cards like Milling Mage is just definitely at the top of my list when I think of cyborg cards. You know, I don't really, you know, having soft answers is fine and all, but in modern, if you don't have a hard answer, a lot of times that's gonna just pretty much be game for you. I think that attempt to save myself some life was not worth it. Because um, my opponent played something on two that I wanted to hit with the with the detention, deputy of detention, I wouldn't have been able to by doing it that way. So might have been a small misplay there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and fetch up a I think I'm gonna go with a temple garden here. So, if, well, if I go Temple Garden, uh, it would allow for me to play Deputy next turn, but if I get, like, a Steam Vents and then a Stomping Ground, it puts me in a much better position to be able to... I want to be able to counter spells with Glen Alondra as well, but i got to be able to get to that Triple Red um, in order to cast Kiki Jiki. Um, the most immediate thing, though, that I want to snag up is... Green and blue source, I think.
This isn't bad. We're going to just run out this Glenelandra and see if our opponent can deal with it. So this is not a bad spot for us to be in. Um, so we can pretty much just swing, and then I think we're just going to drop the scavenging ooze, hold up the counter, and then we can eat a bunch of our own creatures with ooze and make that a really big threat. So opponent's got a path for us. We could counter it. Uh, make him commit another spell to it. I'm not against that. And I'm gonna crack land here. Um, so I want to be able to grab a another red source I think would be ideal because we're going to want to be able to cast the Kiki Jiki um, even though getting a white source would open us up to being able to play deputy so I'm going to go with just snagging the, uh, the steam vents here and I am okay with paying the life oh wait that was a mistake. I'm bad at this game. I wanted a green source because I could eat something else. There's no point in paying the life. So uh, I'm gonna eat my own Finx. That was a punt. Because now he can do exactly what he's doing, where he's gonna snap and then bring back Bolt and Bolt, my dude. So mistake. I'm just going to drop a Thrag Tusk here and pass it to them. The run is great. We're just going to swing here with Thrag Tusk. the Kiki Jiki. No, I'm gonna run out the uh... yeah the Kiki Jiki here will make force him to answer but if we go wall roots into Thrun um, next turn we'll be able to hold up the regen shield which will be great. Counterbounces land. Why would you punch your own land?
items. All right, I think we're going to drop the tireless tracker and then pass it to our opponent. Here. I want to see if they want to just eat up their things. I'm okay with that. And now I'm going to drop the Thrun. Oops. Sorry, I'm playing a little sloppy because I'm trying to pick up our time because we're down to just uh, a little over three minutes here. Hieroglyphic illumination. Cycle it. Cycle it. Here, so I'm not gonna worry about doing anything else. Got an island. Okay. Let's see if we can swing for the victory. Possibly could have gone with some different lines there, but that wasn't bad at all. Went to uh, another 2 1, so undefeated. All right, let's go at it again. This deck's a lot of fun, though. This is this is exactly the kind of deck I want to be playing in modern. And I can stop playing Tron so my opponents can stop hating me. And I don't have to play KCI so the whole magic community doesn't hate me. Because uh, before that banning, I was definitely going to be on the KCI train. And I'm already on that Tron life, so. Best deck, can't stop, won't stop. So 
decks are what uh, other decks do you guys want to see me play um i got time for doing one more league after this so definitely open to any and all suggestions if you want to see me play just post it in chat and i'll can't believe i won it was, it was written that i would always win that this is the best deck in modern i'm gonna be undefeated <laughs> And I can snag any deck I want because uh, I'm definitely subscribed to Mana Traders. They're, I'm not sponsored by them, obviously. But you have the creepy laugh, so it from works for you. I have the best laugh, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Plus, I have numerous laughs. Just ask uh, Epoch. I am not opposed to running Ponzo. If you want to put together that uh, brazeless list that you're thinking about playing, uh, you can ship it over to me and I can download it. And then I'd be able to snag it up pretty quick here. Let's do Ponzo then. That's two votes for it. Sweetie, you want to put that deck together on uh, like, uh, one of the places I can just download a copy of it and then I can uh, get it set up? Okay. So this hand's slow, but it has everything we want, but we have to hit it in the middle land. I think I'm okay with keeping this. We only need one more lands, and then we have a variety of three drops to hit. Teleria means it should be Amulet. Oh, we're so good at this game. Amulet could be pretty bad. I think they kind of crush us. Oh, it's Bluetron. Okay. That's pretty rude. Opponent just reset us. You know, this is a version of Tron that I have not played and I've always wanted to. So that might be a upcoming deck in the future. Opponent's also excited that we are playing a podless podless. And I think we want to get a steam vents, would open us up the most, but we don't have the other green. I kind of want the other green source because then we can e whip back to land. So I think I'm going to grab a breeding pool, just in case we need it, so... Alrighty. So I think I'm just a fan of us getting our mana base fixed up. As far as consistency and doing what Tron is known for, I definitely think Mono Green's the way to go. Um, the deck is just so streamlined for, you know, just assembling Tron and dropping a threat. Um, the mono blue version, though, is much more interactive, which is, depending on the format, very good. So it allows you to just, like, you don't care if you assemble Tron or not. You know, you're, you're able to just be there, play it just like normal, and then be this, like, control shell, and then eventually you, you know, have Tron, and you're like, great, uh, now I can just be a big threat to you. Um, hmm... I think we're just going to pass it back to our opponent and then drop the Crassus at the end of their turn. Um, MTG Goldfish, I mean any deck that I can just download a, um, a text file and it's like an upload it to 
um, Moto into Mana Traders is just fine with me. I think we're gonna swing and then we're gonna drop a tracker and play a land. No. We got a duplicate here of Vanifar, um, so I guess we don't really mind if they counter it. So let's go that route, because if we can untap with this, we're gonna be pretty happy with life. Hey man, doesn't matter to me. Whatever list you want, I'm good with it. Hold it is scrying vigorously. scrying vigorously. Okay. So like here is a good example of why like the one of blue Tron deck solid because you're just you're just playing out your threats that you want and I mean I'm putting out playing out there's but playing out your lands and then it's not really a big deal if you assemble trying or not and then you're still interacting you're still advancing your board state by playing these lands um, they're gonna drop a map here they kind of oh, they have the land for it and then they're gonna be able to assemble Tron next turn now main board we don't have Magus but sideboard we definitely do which is good um, we don't have another red source, unfortunately. Otherwise, we would be able to just key key and win here, which would have been cool. Um, can we evolution for anything relevant this turn? I don't think particularly. We'll be able to get a five drop, and that five drop could be zealous, which would be pretty cool. But I. It's not going to be able to do anything with that. Um, we can play Vanifar and try to untap to win. But I think that's pretty hard considering they're going to be assembling Tron. Um, but I still think... Um, does Woodland Bellower have a combo or is it just value? Um, it's a part of the combo. You use Bellower to fetch up your Bounding Crassus. So you can go up to six and then get the Crassus for the additional creature. Usually you need to win the game. Yeah, I think I think our best play is honestly just to play out the Vanifar and pass. So they're gonna mind slaver us, which is not good at all. So if you, they don't have the mind slaver lock, which is good, but they definitely can destroy our board. They can go woodland, not fetch up anything. 
prime speaker, sac, uh, it doesn't even matter, they can just get something to screw us over. What could they get, really, though? They could go get... They could go prime speaker, sac birds, get a scrub ranger, scrub ranger bounce a land, woodland falls, play it, sac, and don't get anything. So then we only have three mana on their turn, they could O-Stone wipe the board. Um, they could also Eldritch Evolution, but I don't think that's... I mean, they could do it, but... They're gonna sack the bounding, get a four drop. They could go Hippocamp, Untap, Vanifar, Zealous, un or then get rid of one Kiki. That's a line too. All right, so they're definitely gonna try to go off. See if they can have some fun. So they want to keep the chain going, or are they going to just do Kiki? They're going Kiki. What are you gonna evolution for? You just wanna have the combo? See, that's what we wanna be doing. But they're doing it for us, which is much less fun. I think they're just trying to get rid of as many pieces as they can out of our deck. Because they could go Hippocamp here into Kiki and then Sack, go get Zealous and Sack that as well. So then we don't have any 4 drops to combo with or any 5 drops to combo with. Which is pretty devastating. And then we would have to rely. Oh, they're just going to go with Prime Speaker. That's an odd way to end it. I guess that leaves us with just one prime speaker in the in the deck. Now they just go wooded, don't fetch up anything and pass. Totally worth it. We got two damage in. I don't think our opponent realizes that we can't copy the uh, the Vanifar, and the Vanifar can't be activated at uh, sorcery. I mean, at instant speed, it's just sorcery speed. So we're not in a terrible, no, we're not in a good spot, but we're not in a terrible spot either because um, they just have Ostom right now on board, and they're not doing anything that like threatens us and makes us makes them win the game. Is that ten mana? Is that a little mog? Oh, it's a spirit dragon. Yeah, that's not good for us. I think that's just game. Yeah. I don't think we're winning from here. So, because he's just gonna wipe the board. Anything we play, he can shoot down with Ugin, and we don't have really enough mana to play more than one thing at a time. So, we're gonna we're gonna head out of here. Alrighty. So, I definitely want to bring in Glenalandra, and then I want to bring in the Magus. And then we want to bring in things like, I think, Reclamation Sage and Ancient Grudge to kind of just stop them from 
blowing things up too much. I don't know if we want to bring in a braid. Um, the single relic, I don't really want to bring in. The blues should be more than enough already to do it. Um, to get rid of like their ability to lock us out. Um, so what do we want to take out though? The number one cards I want to bring in are the uh, Reclamation Sage, the Glen, and the Magus. Um, I don't really need the extra value, I don't think, from t um, Tireless Tracker. So that, I think that's fine to uh, shave. And then... Maybe I won't bring in the Ancient Grudge, and I'll leave it at just Rex Sage, Magus, and Glen. And then... They shouldn't have too much target removal, but they have a lot of targeted balance effects. Um, but they also have a lot of sweepers. So I think I'm going to shave the spell sky, And then we're going to cut... I want to leave the deputy in because they can hit a lot of relevant things. Uh, I think we're going to just cut one cord. No, I want cord. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to cut the cord. Cord's the weakest for finding things, so... We're going to run it like this. Sweet. That will be the next deck we're going to play out. So after this, I'll, uh, after this league, I'll probably take a small break, and then we'll uh, download that list and get things going. Alrighty, so this is a slower hand, but it's got a Magus um, of the Moon, and we just got to make sure to go Wooded Foothills into a green source, and we got to draw another one, and we'd be able to drop the Magus here, which would slow them down quite a bit. Um, so yeah, let's try it. Gemstone. So the breeding pool here is not ideal because um, it's going to get turned into a mountain, but I think that's still fine for the most part. Um, let's run it out there, and then we're going to plug this ooze. and us map all right well let's see if a bunch of mountains is good enough for our opponent That's tragic. Opponent had the counter. 
And they're going to be able to assemble Tron here, go up to 5 mana on their turn. So let's see if they have a payoff. If we can get another land, we might be able to drop uh, the Vanifar here and still have a game. Keep the blue source up so they cut another interaction for us. Or just go play Fabricate, okay. Let's see what we're gonna fetch up. They got a worm coil engine. Okay. I am happy with the land. I'm going to play Vanifar and pass it over. Let's see what our opponent has. Opponent is thinking. Alright, so if we get to untap, what do we get to do? I think we go Glenalandra into Zealous, untap. Prime Speaker, get Bellaware, Bellaware, get Bounding, Bounding, untap. Speaker, Speaker would un get a. A hippocamp, hippocamp. Um, we would keep in play, sack the Glenalandra, get a geeky jiki, and win the game. So if we get to untap here without them interacting, we do win the game. Got Academy Ruins. One coil in hand. Alright, well, let's see if we win. Oh, that's unfortunate. Alright, his opponent's gonna counter us. They're not counter us, but repeal us to stop us from winning. Hmm. All right, so I think while my opponent's tapped out here, we're going to go ahead and just crack this and get a Steam Vents. Just so I have access to it without me having to crack, uh, crack anything for it. only has expedition maps in the graveyard for that academy ruins that's the contortion okay So they got one unknown and a worm coil. They're going to drop the worm coil this turn. Looks like it. Nope. Seven mana, eight mana. Okay. 
Ballista for four. Too bad Glenn Alondra only counters non creatures. So this does put us in a pretty bad spot because their Ballista can just shoot down stuff and then they can just Academy Runes it back every turn. Which is not good. <laughs> um, man, that puts us in a tough spot. Um, Alright, so we could run out Vanfar here and then they could just shoot it down. Um, or we can play out... Um, we could swing in for one, go Crassus into Crassus, but I don't think that's going to be doing much for us. They could just wait, shoot. Hmm. Okay. Huh. Okay. Well, I think we're going to swing either way. We could go Crassus into Vanifar and pass, not hold up any counter, they just have a one coil in hand. Um, that or we could just play the um, Vanifar and pass it over to our opponent and have them kill the Vanifar and then... Uh, we could bait them into a swing into the double Crassus. Let's try that, Let's see if we get really lucky. Because they can only add... Okay, so they're going to kill that. And they can only be able to add on two counters on their turn unless they get another Tron land. So then we can go Crassus into Crassus and try to block the Ballista and kill it. And then if he plays a Warm Coil ahead of time... Yeah, he does. Swing. Cool. So we're going to drop a Crassus. Tap and get a Worm Coil. Block. Play the other Crassus and see if we can rip a Kiki Jiki off the top of the deck. We were supposed to play the other Bounding Crassus. I just bunted that away. Oh no, what? They didn't do it? Oh man, we got lucky. Two punts in a row. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, so we got lucky that we punted, but then our opponent also punted. <laughs> Okay, so now we can we have the three red that we do need, um, and then we're just going to grab an island here. I don't think there's much reason to grab the breeding pool, and then we're going to play out the Crassus. Okay, so we could go Prime Speaker, wouldn't do much, and then they could on their turn be able to go Academy Ruins, put Walking Ballista on top of their deck for four, and then kill our Prime Speaker. Um, 
and we don't have enough mana to go Prime Speaker and Zealous to give it haste. We can Zealous, grab the Worm Coil, swing at them for 12, and pass turn. Hmm. Okay, so if we go Zealous into Worm Coil, swing, grab their stuff, hit them for 12, they're going to be able to swing back at us with Worm Coil. They're definitely going to Academy Ruins, their Walking Bullets on top of their deck, and then Vanifar would still be there. Um, I think if we force them into the position of killing Vanifar, we're better off, and then the following turn playing Ballista. I mean, I'm playing Zealous. So. The kick was good. It was a, it was a pretty good punt. It was just a good thing that we both <laughs> punted. <laughs> Okay, so they're doing what they are expected to do. I don't think they can afford to let us untap with Prime Speaker, though. Um, so they should be required to shoot the Vanifar here, giving us another turn to draw a Kiki Jiki. can stabilize for another turn we could go zealous into grabbing the worm coil swing pass they can only kill either the um the crassus or the uh, zealous so that looks to be our line by just a single point if they wanted to ballista us. So I think we get one more draw here. And that is not good enough. Thanks. Put us up to seven. They can add two counters. Shoot us down. We can block the worm coil, so we might be okay for another turn if they have an awkward. We're just gonna play the birds here in case we need another blocker. But this is still looking pretty awful for us. Just blocking this and blocking this. Leaving our guys up, gain two more life.
Hmm. I think opponent here forgot that we uh, that the walking ballista had damage on it. So we can cord here, and as long as our opponent doesn't have anything, I think we win. That's for five. And that is a Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki will target Zealous. Oh man, the opponent had the dismember. Okay, so they have Dismember, kill that, we get a Kiki Jiki token, I mean a Zealous token, we're going to take their, uh, take their Worm Coil, um, just so we can survive another turn. And we're just swinging out here. So they got a ballista for five. Our opponent's definitely been trying to let us win, but I feel like it's just not enough. <laughs> and pass it to our opponent. And this should be it. For, uh, should be it here. We, we were supposed to lose a while back, anyhow. Um, so we've been lucky that we've even gotten to this point. But opponent's going to be able to just uh, add counters onto the ballista um, swing. Oh, they got a contortion as well. So yeah. And then they can just swing, we block one to add the counters on the ballista, make sure we take six either way, and then just shoot us for the rest, so. So that is it, there. The deck is no longer the strongest deck in modern, it's a 2-1. Let's run it back for match four. So for anyone that is uh, checking me out for the first time, I'm going to be trying to stream every Sunday evening here around 6 or 7 o'clock, and then I'm going to try to stream at least one night a week, either uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Most likely it'll be on um, Tuesday or Wednesday here, just kind of trying to balance between uh, school and uh, work and life and everything. Um, everything that I do... Uh, stream. I do record the different matches, and then I'm uploading them to my uh, YouTube channel um, and on here as well. So if you ever want to check out some of the matches I've played, it's definitely available to you. Uh, this hand seems sweet. We're going to be able to go a bird into a wall into his Prime Speaker or Eldritch. So this is this is awesome. We're just going to give our opponent a life here, because I don't want to fetch with the land until I know what I'm searching for and what I am missing. Seagram Coast pathing us on their turn. Bit odd, but okay. Uh, we're going to grab the island here. If you've, uh... So Path puts a land into play tapped, but they pathed our bird. So, like, they're basically just giving us the land anyway. They just took a card out of their hand. So, very interesting choice our opponent made.
And I think I'm just a fan of running out Wall of Roots here. And then getting having that extra mana um, available to us. Um, and we're going to crack this Wooded Foothills. And I think we're going to be snagging a green source for sure. Um, I want to have the red if necessary, so we're going to grab the stomping ground. Pay the life, because now we can also run out the spell skite. Assuming spirits, it's Z Chrome, but EE -E for two. Hmm, that's rude. Okay. So we could evolution here and go get a four drop, which for our deck, um, I think the biggest one here would be. Shall I? Um, or we can drop the Prime Speaker and pass it back to them. They'd have to activate the EE before they would be able to take our Prime Speaker. Hmm. I kind of like forcing the situation with dropping the Prime Speaker. No, I think I'm going to go with the evolution because I want to put them in an awkward position with the Shalana in play. Playing. Does anyone have an idea what this deck is? Steam vents. Okay, so for the chain here, we can go Bound and Crassus, sack it, go get Breaching, sack it, go get Zealous, un untap the Prime Speaker, sack Shalai, go get Kiki Jiki, and win the game. I think that's what we're gonna do, because that should just be game. Oh, we can just make it easier. Sack shall I for Kiki. But. Yeah, I don't know what that so they're uh they are as for tolls control, huh? So we can bring in some pieces to help with that. We can bring in the reclamation stage to take out the as for told. Um, we shouldn't be too worried about life gain here, so we don't need like the finks or anything. 
I don't know if they actually are living in because I didn't see them cycle anything. Yeah, you were right. That's what I realized afterwards. I can just sack Angel for Kiki and win. So I was definitely making it more complicated than I needed to. Um, so if they're like a standard control deck, I might just want to bring in Thrun. And I might just play Glen Alondra, but I don't really... Hmm. The Braids and Ancient Grudges doesn't hit the enchantments. I shouldn't be too worried about that anyhow. Um, okay. So here I am going to take out... if they I'm going to take out one Ooze in case they are on the uh, Living In plan. And then I'm also going to take out... Hmm. I'm gonna take out one. I'm gonna take out the Finks, I think. No, I'm gonna take out the Tireless Tracker. I don't think I'm gonna need it. True, it is style points. It is style points. And then I think I'm gonna take out one cord. Ooh, I like that. That is a mentality that's an issue with this deck uh, when you start playing a lot, is you start trying to think of all the different lines you could be going after instead of just keeping things simple because you get to the, this mentality you have to do different chains to make things work. Uh, I'm okay with this hand. It's not great, but um, we're one mana source away from being able to do Kiki and Breaching, which would let us win the game. So they can get a life, and we're going to play this normal and pass it over to them. Okay, so they are cycling, so they are probably on the living end plan. Suspending Ancestral, another cycler. We're just gonna swing in. More cycling action. Okay. So we would have liked to get the birds earlier, because the bird would have been able to... So if we can put ourselves in the best situation to win here, it would be, um, on next turn, it would be casting the Breaching Hippocamp now, untapping the Noble and casting the bird so we can make sure we have the red source. Um, but then that's exposing us to what they probably would be doing which is wiping the board as soon as they draw a as foretold. Alternatively, we can just play Prime Speaker and still be in an okay spot. I think that's good. Yeah. I came to the same conclusion, Reese. So they're going to path us, and we're going to get an island. So now we could just play the bird, play a land, pass. At the end of their turn, play Breaching Hippo Camp, and then uh, have the ability to cast Kiki and win the game. So think we're pretty happy with that line.
Yeah, I agree. I, I was thinking about the same thing, Reese. Having that basic mount, I'd be able to... Um, being able to fetch that up at times, just be able to play Kiki, it seems super relevant. So I am going to play out the Hippocamp. Sweet, I'm a fan of not trash cyborgs. I think our opponent's about to Crypticus here. Or they're gonna let it resolve. Cool. They probably realize they can just cryptic at the Kiki. We're gonna go fetch up a steam vents. So I definitely think we just go for the combo kill. See if they have it. Or do you guys think we should wait and just swing here for four? Um, I mean, most likely they have counter mana, but why wait, I guess? Any input chat? Otherwise, I think we're just gonna run it and see if we win the game. All right, let's do it. I think we're just going to beat them for four. Ancestral for them is not good for us. I think they're still just waiting and dropping it as we're told. There's the as we're told. Now do they have the living end? We do get that Kiki if they do that though. Alright, I think we're just gonna swing here. And then play Reclamation Sage. Making things unkillable sounds like a fantastic plan for all that mono red we keep seeing. I got another one because they're just that good. Alright, they got Living End here. So after they, if they target us, which they are, um, afterwards we're going to crack the, the Misty here. Um, and see if we can still get a relevant draw.
Hmm. Scrimp Ranger lets us untap. Um, but only doing it once a turn, and we have to untap a forest for it. So I think we're just gonna play it out. Oh, it's Flash. Sorry. Need to, first time playing with this card. Um, and I think we're just gonna pass turn because we can use the Scrib Ranger to block our opponent. I haven't seen this Living End deck in a while though, so it's kind of interesting seeing it pop back up. We're just going to tap this now, copy the Scrib Ranger, and then use our ability here to bounce the temple back to our hand, untap the key key. And if they swing, I think we're just gonna make another copy of a Scrib Ranger and block the 5-5, five, five, the 4-4, four, four, and the 4-4. Four, four. And we'll take the head for the three. Looks like I DC'd again, so I gotta call Comcast about that business because this is getting irritating. as though we're back. So we ju in case you missed it, I just uh, made some extra Scrib Rangers like I, I was planning and then blocked down the 5-5, five, five, the 4-4, four, four, and the 4-4. Four, four. Eldritch Evolution here should be pretty good. So, we're going to copy the Scrib Ranger. Scrib Ranger is going to untap our Kiki Jiki, and we're going to return the forest to our hand. And then we're going to just tap it for a minute. Um, sack the new token. Oh, that's bad for us. So they're going to bounce this. We don't have enough mana to replay it either. Um, I think we're just going to copy the Scrib Ranger. Have it happen. And then we can swing for one with the token.
if anyone's ever played Moto, you gotta, um, in order to actually, because you play with the, um, the chess clock here, where both players have 25 minutes, so maximizing your time management is really important, so like one of the biggest things you want to do is yield to um, triggers you don't care about. Um, our opponent's drawing a lot of cards here. Another as foretold. So we're going to block the 5-5, five, five, take the 11, go down to 4, and see if we can win here. They drew another 3 cards. So we can go Wall of Roots into Kiki Jiki and try to survive one turn. And if they have a counter, then it's game. token now but it gets exiled in a turn um, so I think that's just game yeah I think we'd lose this one so they can just kill us on their turn all right so they are on the um, the graveyard plan here so I'm gonna bring in the ooze and the relic and there is some merit to this idol on here. We'd be able to bring it in so they can't uh, um, chain things, but I don't think that's good enough here. Um, those still aren't worth it, and those aren't a big deal. So I think we're going to cut the Glenelandra back out because it's just kind of slow. So this isn't ideal because we're not really doing much to advance our board state, but we do have a relic that's going to stop them from winning. So I think we're going to keep it. their option so if you can you know make it just one thing just make it can happen anyway so uh, I don't think there's too much value in getting that spell sky out could protect another card next turn though so let's do it and I want to start being able to get the necessary mana to pay play uh, kiki jiki it's been coming up a lot that we want to be able to cast it so sorry about that i had a phone call
PE41. Okay. Looks like we're just passing here. Of the steam bots. Um, I could play the Wall of Roots, but then that won't let us play the Hippo Camp that I want to be able to play at the end of their turn, so I'm just going to pass. I am more than happy to work with some people and see if I can get a graphic that says you just got quanged. I feel like I should just spell it with the way I spell my name, though. So we're going to target them. And then the question is if we want to draw a card. Um, overplaying the Hippocamp. Um, hmm. Because if we draw Kiki, we would just win. I think the extra card's worth it. So let's draw a card. Okay. No, that is not how it's spelled. So my name is technically spelled Q U A N G. Definitely looks like our opponent's struggling to get the necessary mana for everything. Um, I'm still going to fetch up the uh, red sources here because I want to be able to cast um, threats. So I can go Wall of Roots here and I won't have an issue casting the Hippocamp. I wouldn't worry about being garbage, man. Like, I never use that name, and it's kind of just something that I have, so. <laughs> Alright, so there's cycling. And I imagine more cycling. I've drawn a bunch of cards. Looks like they're passing. Nope. Okay, there we go. We got another ancestral. And step, we are going to drop a hippo camp. Well, so I the any the reason I use that name whenever I'm playing um, Magic is because it's in the system as that name. So if I tell someone that, uh, like, let's say my name is Dwee, they're gonna get really confused. Um, so in every other setting but Magic, I'll use my I'll use Dwee, and so that's just kind of how it ended up working out. Huh. I still don't got much going on. I'm just gonna pass. Yeah, because if I was like, you know, the way that with the way uh, Quang is spelled, I'm just like, oh no, my name's Dwee. They're like, that's how that's pronounced with that spelling, and they they get real real awkward about it. So I just say uh, my name is Quang as a result. But if you like meet me anywhere else, I'll never use the name. I really should have just done the free name change when I was able to, uh, becoming a citizen, but it would have been like that minor annoyance of having to do it. Uh, so like when you get a name change, you, you have to go through and update all of your documents, and I felt that that was just too lazy. 
I don't want to change it in Wizard's system because if I receive a payout from them, I believe I have to get it from what's in the system, from my understanding. So if I, um, I want to bounce our land. Okay. Um, so yeah, so then uh, uh, any payouts that I've received, I want to make sure it's done through my legal name because if I get something cash, I have to use my legal name. Three, four, five, six, seven, possibly eight. That's still short. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do here is So we could hold up the Zealous and, and the Vanifar. We could pass it back to our, uh, play a land, pass it to our opponent, and then next turn play another land, use Zealous. I know Zealous untapping lands not going to do us anything because we want to be able to untap the speaker. We could just play speaker and run them out there. Um, then our opponent would have to just wipe the board, and they're not doing too much right now. So I think that's what we'll do. And then this way we can still play Hippocamp as well. So if we get to untap here, we'll win the game. Like if I have someone that's um, that I know that's uh, running the shop, a lot of times they'll change the name for me to Dewey um, in the system. So then for that night, they'll say Dewey. Because you can change it locally um, to whatever name you want. But I never really want to do it beyond that. is as foretold. And I imagine we're going to get a living end. And I'm going to be getting back a hippo camp. They're going to be getting all of their creatures. And if we draw a couple different things here, we still win the game. And I don't have any way to, because you can only add one counter on here at a, per time. I can't suck anything else. I think we just have to let them die. And then we're gonna crack this. Hmm. That is not good enough. Yeah, I'm actually just a big fan of all the new arts that they came out with. So we can survive a turn. We can play Bird. And then play Zealous, take their 5-5, swing with it, and, they, and then uh, when they swing back at us, we can block a couple things down. Take their 4 4 because the 5 5s have hex proof. Play this untapped, and we're just going to swing with the 4 4. So we can block here and block here, take nine, go to four, see if we win. Nope, we drew a land and we have a hippocamp in my hands, so that means we lose. That was a bummer. 2-0 start going into 0-2.
Alrighty, so let's get into this last match for this league. So this hand's got no land, so we're going to ship this. And this has all lands and a cord, so we're going to ship this. This has three lands of Vanna Farm Breach. I guess we're going to keep it. And we got a Hierarch on top. So we're just going to go land pass. We're going to run out Noble, play the... What a foothills and pass it to our opponent. I know, I don't think we could have asked for more with that 7 and that 6. Okay, they're going to be killing our stuff. That's super rude. Okay, let's go get a stomping ground because we can go get the necessary blue source with this tarn. Okay, thought seizing us. Taking the banner fire, reasonably so. Grab that steam vents. Alright, I think we're just gonna pass turn so we can play out the Hippo Camp. source here just in case I need access to it for a July. And we're swinging for no reason. Just want to see if our opponent would block. And I'm going to run out the wall and pass it to our opponent. Spirits, and we're going to go fetch up stomping ground. So we have the three red sources. We got some winner hands right now. Um, we got a bird. I'm just going to play out the bird because we want to be able to invoke if we needed to for six mana, but we can do it for five right now. And we're just gonna take that hit here. Got a noble. So we'll play out the noble and we can swing for four. Yeah, this is true modern board states right now. So we're just going to flash that in when we want. Ah, oh, they're Mardu. Okay. Uh, well, we're going to play the Crassus, so you can't have it. We got some tokens. We got an ooze. Hmm. 
the very least, we can eat some other stuff in our grave and present a faster clock. A Nahiri. I'm gonna exile our bound in crisis. And they're gonna get rid. Alright, so they don't really have anything in their graveyard that that's big of a deal. Um, so I'm just gonna eat some of our stuff that's irrelevant. Vampire is pretty good. Let's see if they can survive a turn and if we can get another creature. Is unfortunate. I think we're in a pretty awful spot. That is a Kiki Jiki that we're going to have to play out. It's rude. Just trying to do combo stuff. Next turn, they've got Nahiri alting. Their hand's so good, they didn't even want to plus Liliana, so it's definitely a removal spell. Alright, let's see what they kill us with um, using Nahiri. What do they get? Emrakul. Emrakul. And we're dead. Alrighty. So they are on Mardu Nahiri mid range. Mardu Nahiri mid range. So they're going to just have a really high amount of removal spells. So I don't think we're really going to be able to be on the like evolution plan. So I'm going to cut a couple of those. And then just try to bring in some relevant creatures here that we can uh, try to just get value from and then win the game that way because it's in, as a backup because it's going to be pretty hard to keep up with them um, with everything just dying so I think making every single one of our creatures really relevant to the board state is going to be huge I shouldn't be able to deal with Thrawn either as long as we can keep a regen shield up And I don't really want to bring in any removal for them because a lot of their creatures are just small stuff. I 
Yeah, I think I think we'll run it like that. A lot of high value creatures that will help us stay in the board. Alright, this seems sweet. We'll go into Tireless Tracker. Into pretty much everything. All right, so I want to be able to have the green source here, and I want to have the blue source. I'm gonna grab the breeding pool. Play out the tracker and pass back to our opponent. Land was a great draw, so we're going to get two clue tokens. Alright, so we can drop Sp Prime Speaker here and then just pass and then threaten our opponent with lethal and he won't have the ability to won't have the ability to uh, wipe our board um, so that'll be pretty sweet Okay, so they're gonna hit our tireless track. We have to discard a card. I think we're gonna discard the cord. Alrighty. Just gonna walk through this to make sure we can win. And I think winning here means having to cast um, the Thrun here. Because we can go Thrun into Zealous, into Bellower. Hmm. Into Bellower to grab Bounding. And then. Sack the bounding for breaching, breaching for Kiki, and then we can chain up from Noble into Scrib Ranger into bounding for the win. So, Opponent just conceded. But yeah, we would be able to go bounding, um, untap Vanifar again, um, sack the bounding, get a breaching. Breaching will grab um, Kiki Jiki, and then we can go um, from there. Uh, Kiki Jiki. No. Not Kiki Jiki. Yeah. Oh, Kiki Jiki. Copy Woodland. Woodland gets bounding. We win. All right, so we're just going to run that back. A 
This is a one lander, but it's a pretty powerful one lander as long as we get to keep our creatures. So I'm going to keep it here. Um, we're generating a lot of mana and a lot of good quality creatures we'd be grabbing. So it is a lot easier when we start with seven instead of having to mull down. Okay, so I'm okay with the Inquisition here um, because we have two one drop mana dorks. Um, so because we drew grows, I'm gonna grab the breeding here just in case we need to hit that green source and that blue source later instead of just restricting this to the green. And we're gonna play out the noble and pastor. I know, I am so excited about this deck too, Gorb. Alright, they got a spell bomb, so we're gonna go green into wall. And then with the wall, we're going to generate for a bird and pass it back to them. Ooh. Looks like opponents having mana issues. Okay. So we can go... Um, I don't really want to play the tracker this turn. Uh, as far as me building it in real life, I already have all the cards. I just picked up everything I needed to play it. The only thing I'm missing right now are two Scrib Rangers because um, the order got lost in transit. So uh, the store was already really awesome. They refunded my money and I've already purchased uh, another copy. So I should have a new one here pretty soon. I'm going to play out the Ooze. And then I don't want to play out the bird because I don't want to walk into like a small wrath. I don't want to be able to reassemble just a little bit. And I want to be able to just uh, start presenting a good threat here. So But yeah, realistically, Garb, next time you see me, I will have this deck built and I will be playing it. As long as I can make the deck good enough, I'm going to run tournaments with this deck now that, you know. Uh, I'm really bored of Tron, and it seems to be sloping downwards in quality um, because of what the what the meta is looking like. And KCI got banned, so yeah, this is gonna be my new deck. I just want to run it through multiple iterations so we can figure out the best version of it, and then that way we can have a really solid deck. So me, you, and Andrew can have a good time with all those uh, team events we'll do. Um, so I'm just going to start eating. Uh, I don't think it truly matters what we grab here, but we'll just grab the removal just in case. I don't really want to weaken my wall of roots if I don't have to. Um, that's great. We got a land, so we can get some value out of our tracker. I do not want to pay life. Oh, hi, Danny. Thanks for joining, man. Appreciate it, guys. So, since you guys are just joining, we are two and two with this deck. Um, and we're in the last match right now. And we've comboed our opponent once. And then our opponent has... Oh, man. Um, I guess we could have paid that life. Okay, I'm gonna run out Vanifar and swing, and we're going to eat our trigger, get some damage in. Yeah, after this, uh, some people wanted to see um, Ponzo, so we're gonna play Ponzo next. So after this match here, I'm gonna take a quick five minute break, and then I'll get Ponzo loaded up, and we're gonna run another league with that. 
They got board sweeper. And we're gonna crack a clue, draw a card. I don't think there's any big events coming up until we hit um, until we hit um, March. I think there's like one or two events in February that we might go to. But I know there was a regionals in March that we wanted to go to. And was it an open for the other event in March for Modern? You want to see some, me play some blue-white control? I don't know, man. Like, I'm pretty boring when it comes to control. <laughs> You'll have to walk me through it. I don't play it too often. I'm more than happy to. Regionals didn't have a Michigan location? This is terrible. Where are we going, Chicago? Yeah, I guess we'll go to Chicago. It's kind of weird that they wouldn't have a Michigan location. I don't know what our opponent's waiting for. We're just trying to draw a card. Oh, they disconnected. Okay, so we're waiting. We're waiting. I'm gonna take a look to see if there is a Michigan Regionals. Or if not, what the closest one's gonna be for us. If it was like, what? They would have to have like, Simeon Spirit Guide times three into a Mana Morphos to Stifle Bird us. That would be amazing. Okay, they finally let us go. Um, we're not gonna pay the life and we're just gonna run out the bird and pass. So I wanted to shuffle the deck away. Okay, so this could be fun here. So our opponent could tick up the Nahiri to eight, and then we could Zealous Construct and take their Nahiri and alt with it, and then get our Kiki Jiki in with the game. So let's play Thrun so they have to fear it a bit. They can create a man, uh, a dude to block it, but. Oof, they pushed our bird. All right, so we need to draw a mana source here now. gonna make us lose our Thrun and if we draw a mana source here boom how great is life just gonna grab a forest nope yeah I guess in case we need it I'll grab the stomping ground I would like to pay two life So 
So Zealous. Zealous will take Nahiri. I'm going to alt with Nahiri. I'm going to go get Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki is going to tap Zealous. Yeah! Ah, <laughs> oh, that was so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that was my favorite one of the day so far. <laughs> oh, all right. So we made a minor profit <laughs> in that week. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. Oh my gosh. Okay. So let's get this deck returned, and then we can uh, start snagging up the the cards for Ponza. up Rhythm Panza. Alright, I'm about to go stop recording real 